Hello, and you're very welcome to season two of the Jameson Graduate Program podcast. This is a six episode series focusing on a different part of the Jameson International Graduate Program each week. These episodes aim to share insights onto how the program supports you both professionally and personally from both past and present brand ambassadors. You'll get to know all about that serious character we look for in candidates. And on today's episode, I'm joined by Thomas O'Brien. Thomas is the third year in the program as the marketing executive for the Cultural Outreach and SNR team. Thomas will be talking to us all about language and culture. How are you, Thomas? Hiya, Podge. Hi, everybody. Great to be here. How are you getting on? I am absolutely flying, man. It's great to chat to you. And Tom, you might have just heard me mention there, but do you want to give a bit of background to yourself, who you are and what you do? Sure. Uh, so my name is Thomas O'Brien. Um, before joining the Jemison International Graduate Programme, I studied commerce in University College Dublin. Um, so I'm now in my third year on the programme and uh, my title is Marketing Executive for Cultural Outreach and SNR. It's a bit of a mouthful. That is a mouthful <laughs> and a half, Tom. Yeah. Um, And then before this, for my first two years, I was uh, very lucky to be a brand ambassador based in the amazing city of Bangkok in Thailand. Well, that is that is a ways away from Monaghan, Thomas. I can tell you I can tell you that much. (laughs) Yeah, sure is. Uh, It's funny. um, uh, When I moved to Thailand, it was actually my first time anywhere uh, in Asia. So, yeah, as you said, a massive step, a massive change from from Emmy Vale and Monaghan. I was just going to ask, have you ever been to Asia before? Um, have you ever been anywhere that side of the world at all? Maybe, maybe Africa, or is that the furthest you've ever travelled afield? Oh, uh, I think I think Canada was probably the furthest that I, I'd ever been. No, I'd never um, never been to Asia. And to be honest, like looking back, didn't know the first thing about Thailand or the rest of Asia. Um, thankfully now, uh, two years later, um, I, I've had i've returned with you know i think a fairly decent level of thai um bucket loads of just amazing experiences and more friends over there than i i ever could have imagined more friends over there than here would you say maybe probably after the two (laughs) years away so tom talk to me you 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 went through the application process of the graduate program nearly two and a half years ago now actually nearly three years ago for us which is which is insane um and then come end of July, start of June, you were told that you'd be heading to Asia. What was your initial thought? Oh, man, that's funny, man. I can't believe that it's actually been three years. That's crazy. Um, yeah, because I can remember, like, the, the exact spot that I was standing in when I when I found out that I was going to be the, the brand ambassador in Thailand. And it was just, honestly, it was just sheer elation, you know, no, knowing that that amazing opportunity was was ahead of me and only, like, a few weeks ahead of me. So it was an incredibly exciting time. And then I kind of realized, I was like, oh, I, better, I better learn something about <laughs> about Thailand before I get there, you know? Were you nervous at all? Or were you kind of like, oh, God, um, or was it just a purely welcomed, you know, adventure? I, I think for the most part, it was just a, a welcomed uh, ad- adventure. I think less nervous and more just excited all the time, you know, um, particularly because, like, I think it was a a couple of weeks after I found out, then that was the start of induction and suddenly you're meeting everybody else. Mm. Some people that you've recognized from, you know, from the the different stages of the application process. So it's exciting seeing all those people finding out where everybody's going, getting to know each other. And then all of a sudden you're, you're backside sitting on a plane and you're heading halfway across the world. You're like, wow, okay, here we go. This is real. Of course yourself as well. You, you weren't uh, on a lone venture. You did have Casey Maher. Who, who is I now, did. like yourself, based in Dublin. The two of you were, were the brand ambassadors in Bangkok, which is amazing. Um, yeah, we, we follow each other everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Till death do you pack, jo- someone jo- could say. A joint package, yeah. <laughs> so don't talk to me. You, you, as you mentioned there, with the four weeks of induction, which we know were incredible four weeks and you get to know so many people and you become so close with so many in such a short span of time. Uh, and then you hopped on a flight, you went to the other side of the world, what was it like? What were your initial thoughts when you arrived in Thailand? Ah, uh, yeah, it's it's funny. Uh, in terms of like, even before going there, I I didn't know what to expect from from Thailand. You know, I didn't looking back, I didn't really know the first thing about it. So I just tried to go there with a totally open mind, ready for this big adventure. And in terms of a culture shock, I actually think it hit me all in the first night. Go on, talk <laughs> to us. Uh, like you mentioned, I I. I 
I was over there, uh, very lucky to be there with the wonderful, lovely Casey Marr. Um, but when I first landed, I was by myself. Um, so I traveled there, arrived on a Sunday. Um, didn't know what to expect of the city. Um, I couldn't believe just how big, how big it was when I first arrived. That was kind of mm. the first thing that hit me. And then I'm in the hotel, I'm checking in, and straight away the language barrier hits. Um, and to be honest, like looking back, I don't think it was even so much the language barrier as more like me expecting there to be a big language barrier. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. you know, like had that feeling of like, oh, I feel like I'm such an idiot. I can't communicate here. <laughs> and I was I was starving. The the restaurant in the hotel was was closed. Eventually I'm handed a map and they've like drawn on the map directions to this uh, restaurant um next door and went in there. The restaurant, it, it was lovely, but there was no one else there and I menus and Thai. I'm like, okay, I order from the pictures. I got a, one of those, uh, I ordered some soup, what I know to be a Tom Yum Gung, like, so like a spicy shrimp soup, um, which is like a staple over there. Uh, but I didn't realize that like these are sharing plates. So I got this like huge, big <laughs> giant bowl of soup and it was so spicy that, uh, it made me cry. So my first night, I, my first so, so your night, first night you were crying is what you said. Your first... I was sitting alone in Bangkok crying, but that probably gives us such a grim, a grim outlook, but it wasn't like that at all. You were uh, crying for like the food reasons, not because you were away from home. Yeah. Tell you what, it tasted very good. And, but in, ter- man, in terms of a culture shock, that was it. Like, mm. that's the one thing I always go back to. After that, um, I was met by... Uh, David O'Boyle, former brand ambassador uh, in Thailand. And from that moment on, settled in very quickly. Thai people are amazing. They're some of the most, I think, kind and welcoming people in the world. Can and you... from thereafter, um, settled in. Do you think you could prepare yourself for a culture shock like that? Is there, can you do enough research to not be shook? Or do you think you have to be there to, I guess, experience like, what, what you experienced? Yeah, I think I think it, you can read as much as you want uh, and talk to as many as many people, but um, it's up to you to go to go there um, and experience it for yourself because you'll always find something, you know. Mm. Um, it's the same way. I mean, you can talk about the culture shock, but then you talk about all the the other kind of wonderful different things that you can experience in another culture, and you know, hearing about them is one thing, but experiencing them is is totally totally different. And do you have any of there like of example? Like, what would be your kind of top three maybe cultural nuances? that you noticed or that, that you loved over there that wouldn't be wouldn't be the same here in Ireland? Yeah. Um, in terms of like cultural differences, well, I mean, lang- language was the biggest one for me. Mm. Um, you did know, you, did you learn uh, any, did you learn any of, of the local language there? What, what is the local language there? Uh, so they, they speak Thai, they speak Thai. Thai. Um, and yeah, I did. I was very lucky. Um, so basically like, I think, you know, learning a language is always easier when you're totally surrounded by inspiration. Uh, and I was lucky when I arrived there that the company had arranged Thai lessons for me. Um, and they were brilliant. I think I had maybe 15 lessons and they were great for helping me learn the basics, how to introduce myself. Sawad di krap, hello, pom chu tomat, my name is Thomas, pom maja brat Ireland, I come from Ireland, Pum Ben, brand ambassador, Kong Jemson Whiskey in a cap. I am a brand ambassador for Jemson Whiskey. I learned how to order food, obviously essential, um, <laughs> learned how to give directions to taxi drivers and stuff. And the best thing about it was I would do a lesson on, well, here's like how to order food in a restaurant. And then I'd be sent out, you're like, your homework is to go across the road to the market and order your lunch. I'm like, that is the best <laughs> homework, best homework ever. And then like, Chatting with taxi drivers was the way that I practiced most in the beginning because like even imagine like I was gonna say as taxi. we all know, as we all know, taxi drivers yeah. love to have a chat. So they love to have a chat and it's pretty much the same chat all the time, <laughs> you know. So that was what, what time are you on till? Are you busy tonight? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So for me it was just practicing who I am, what I do, where I come from. Uh and then the longer I was there, I started to learn obviously more about the culture and the people. Um and I started to learn like uh, you know that a lot of the taxi drivers were coming from like a particular region in Thailand called Isan, and they speak a slightly different dialect. So instead of saying Sabai Di Mai, which means how are you, I would say Sabai Di Bok, which also means how are you, but in a slightly different way. So then I started practicing on the taxi drivers and I'd say it. And if they were from that region, they'd be just like, you what? Yeah. How do you know? How do you know what that is? You know? Um, And that was one of my favorite things was like uh, picking up a new phrase and just, 
trying it. Yeah. And nine times out of ten, making a total hames of it. But you know, it didn't matter. It didn't matter because they showed like such a genuine appreciation that you were making that effort. I was just going to say, do, do, do they like show? So, like, would would you deem it important to try and learn the local language? Of course, as we know, uh, on the graduate program. Um, some we do have seven key languages where brand ambassadors who are spoken in those languages will be sent to markets where there's the, the, the speaking language but like yourself we, we have other um, markets where you don't know the language so do you think it's important for a brand ambassador to try and learn the language over there totally totally I think it's honestly just important to learn new languages in general um, I think we're very privileged that we speak English as a first language, you know, mm. and whether it's good or bad, it's it's very quickly becoming like the global universal language. You know, it's the language of pilots and air traffic control, finance, popular mainstream music. And most people who don't have English as their second language are trying to learn English. Mm. But I think I can definitely attest to the importance of, of trying to learn uh, and making the effort to learn new languages. Uh, did you have any uh, mess ups or like, did, did people laugh at all, you all the time? <laughs> all, all the time. One, one thing that's super fun that I love about the Thai language is that it's tonal. Um, so you find this in a couple of different languages um, where... Mandarin one, as well is tonal as well. Yeah, 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 exactly. So like one word, depending on how you can how you say it, has several different meanings. Um, well, I, get you, I might get you to try some, will I? Go on, because I, I, in my head I'm thinking, what do I do? I mean, ah is another one. I'd be like, ah! Ah, uh, oh, I see. So no, this, you know, there's, there's, this, <laughs> this is different again. This okay. is like uh, there's there's certain sounds as well. So it's less to do with the language, and this is more just kind of a, I don't know. Would you just call it like a a general spoken thing, or like we would say something like, uh, what would be a good example? Like, what would you say if you seen someone like with a really nice new bag or something? Like, whoa, whoa! But Thai people will say, oh. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> So that was like my absolute favorite. Or like we're having a conversation, you're agreeing with me, and you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah you're yeah, not, you're yeah. not along. Whereas Thai people are more. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was really interesting. Um, and one thing that blew my mind. So again, this is funny. I'm not really teaching people much of the language here, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you're just... one, one thing that totally blew my mind was uh, that like. Uh, did you know that animal noises are, are different depending on what part of the world you're in? What? Yeah, I totally blew my mind. I was sitting at a table, right? These are the kind of... In my head, I'm, get, I'm, 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 in my head I, I hear a dog meowing for some reason, but obviously that's, <laughs> that's, a, bit too, that's a bit too extreme. Probably too extreme. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Maybe. I haven't traveled everywhere. Um, but <laughs> in, in a situation that can often happen... Um, on your course of the program, I find myself at a multicultural table. There's this guy from um, Germany, a girl from Japan, and a guy from Thailand. And I don't know how animal noises came up, but they did anyway. And they're asking me, like, what does a pig say in Ireland? <laughs> like, what? It's like, what does a pig say? I'm like, oink, oink, oink. They're like, oh, pigs in Thailand say, oot, oot, oot. What? That's a... <laughs> yeah. But absolutely blew my mind. And there was loads of them. There was loads of differences. Like, Irish frog will say ribbit. Thai frog says up, up, up. That's and that's just the funny. And look, it goes back to your point. Of, these are the things you don't really find out unless you're kind of there, because there's not going to be in two. Um, you know, when you're reading books about Thailand, it's more going to be about like the kind of culture, the history, and these are the little kind of nuances that you yeah. experience when you're out there. You talked as well about you know you were learning the language when you first arrived out. The company um, delightfully had language lesson set up for you guys but what else did you do certainly in the first 100 days talk us through in your kind of first 100 days how did you settle in what did you have to do in terms of the role of a brand ambassador as well you know we talk about the six yeah. key pillars all the time yeah absolutely um <clears throat> i was lucky when when i went to thailand thailand's a market that has had brand ambassadors i think since maybe i'm wrong but i think since 2013 you know so i was um the team when I arrived, they were they basically they knew what to do with me, you know. But I was lucky that I had a brand ambassador there to show me around. Mm -hmm. He was there for four or five days, and in those four or five days, he basically introduced me to all of his friends, and his best friends became my best friends. And I think if I had any worry about going over there, 
it was the fact that I was going over there not knowing anybody mm-hmm. and and not and having to kind of start from scratch. Um, and that first week was incredible in terms of like, oh, these these guys are your friends now. You know, stay stay close to them. And a big thing in settling in was hanging around with with local people. You know, um, and I think that's probably you know any time I travel, whether it's you know going to live in Thailand or a weekend down in Kerry or something, <laughs> you you latch onto some local people. You go where they go, do what they do, eat what they eat. Um, and in, in the sense in Thailand, you speak their language, you know, and I, I think that was something that made the whole experience, um, it really enriched the whole experience, you know, and I think that was the only way to be fully immersed in a new culture and a new place. Um, and then I guess the role itself in Thailand was very much field-based. So, uh, which, you know, that suited me down to the ground. It was about being out and about. Um, every day of the week and getting to meet new people. Mm. Massive part of that was the language and the way that I got to, you know, to pick up the language after the lessons, because the lessons only got me the basics. After that, you're kind of on your own, you go, go and just go, go and do it now. And I used to just try to speak all the time. I'd ask questions. I would, so I would, practice speaking Thai by speaking with Thai people every day, you know, and that was the way that I learned the language. And once I had the basics of the language down, uh, and then like you said, learning those little nuances that maybe someone who's there on, you know, a holiday wouldn't pick up. That was the difference. That was the difference in, in people. I think, you know, um, really accepting you because you're showing that proper genuine effort and be a role. I think ultimately is about building relationships, mm. you know, um, I think that's one thing that can be said for us, no matter where we are in the world. Um, and that was a massive help for me in, in terms of building those relationships. And did you have like, I guess, cause that, you know, that experience sounds absolutely amazing. Um, but did you have a challenge? Did you have like a biggest challenge for, for when you, when you arrived or was it just smooth sailing the whole way? Smooth sailing, <laughs> no issues, no hiccups. No, not not at all, not at all. Of course, um, cause, I mean that's that's part of the fun as well is is dealing with with um, different challenges. And look, there was there was many. I think the ones that kind of hit me hit me the most are kind of those, you know. And this is this is kind of funny. Is like you know the way we have our little creature comforts that we love about home. Yeah. And those are things you miss when you're away. Yeah. Um, things like, oh man, I I missed wearing. A big jacket and jumper and warm, and warm clothes. <laughs> it, yeah, the temperature is very like hot it's, over there, isn't it? Yeah, Humid. yeah. And in the two years I was there, I still <clears> never got used to it. You know, uh, it was like hot and sweaty, and then going straight into aircon. It was something that me as an Irishman is just not built for. <laughs> but miss things like that. Miss like shout out to Champions uh, Monaghan Milk, greatest milk in the world. You know, <laughs> miss, missing your your favorite little things. And yeah. now it's so it's so funny. Man, um, like those are the things that used to get me. And I was lucky that my family um, and my girlfriend would send over parcels full of like my favorite little goodies and stuff, you know, particularly my favorite Chris. Oh man, it was great. That got me through. Um, but now that I'm back home, I'm like, oh, I miss my little creature comforts in Thailand. I, yeah. miss, Thai f- I miss Thai food more and more <laughs> every day. I've made some terrible attempts to at trying to cook here, but it's just not the same. <laughs> You can't learn everything on the graduate program, Thomas. Unfortunately, you can't learn how you to can't. do everything. But you can make you can make a pretty good stab at it, though. <laughs> um, I guess um, one of the I've I, kind of two more questions for certainly in terms of language and culture. Um, but I, I wanted to ask, what personally do you think how how did that your experience over in Thailand kind of help you grow? Not only you know personally because we all know that that stepping out of your comfort zone and and you know going on, on an adventure like that to somewhere you've never been before is always going to help you personally to grow and kind of meet new people, but professionally as well. What way do you think that experience has helped? Yeah, well, if I tick off the professionally first. Um, me being someone, you know, even before the program, I had an interest in marketing and I was determined to kind of to, to start a career um, or pursue a career in marketing. You know, having the opportunity to, you know, travel halfway across the world and represent a global Irish brand, you know, and because Jemson here is, is, is huge, like everybody knows um, what Jemson is, but over there they don't. So you mm-hmm. got to be on the ground and that 
first hand experience of like, okay, I'm the guy who's introducing this brand to, to new people. I'm building the brand here in Asia on the ground. That was amazing, you know, um, that whole experience. And now you, you take two years of being in the field and I was very lucky then to, to kind of progress into uh, a third year, um, which is a totally new challenge because now I'm based back in the Dublin office uh, working on our international marketing team, you know, so totally different perspective. You're going from, you know, I'm here on the ground in market to now I'm on the international marketing team. And how is that thinking globally? How has that role, I guess, helped you in your third year? So you, you mentioned like what what your what is your role now? And um, you mentioned at the start of the podcast, but how has that experience you've had for two years helped you to apply it to your current role back in the Dublin office? Yeah, so so my current current role, um Marketing executive of cultural outreach and SNR. I I need to find a way of shortening that down. Just, <laughs> get a tattoo, get a tattooed on you or, or, or yeah, something. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, oh, that's a great, great idea. <laughs> okay, probably um, might might be a bit. Uh, I get not useful if if you do move move roles. Uh, it might be a bit. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be great. I don't think there's enough room to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, the, the the current role the current role uh, to be honest, which is is amazing. So I basically I support. Um, across some key uh, brand global brand campaigns so biggest one being march which is um one of our key moments in the year and then supporting across other global brand experiences and a big piece of that is culture the area of cultural engagement so it's still something that i think is in its infancy but is, is going to continue to grow year on year um good way to kind of a good brand to, to look at as kind of best best example is something like nike um you mm. know nike is no longer seen as you know, just a sports apparel, you know, uh, it's not an athletics brand anymore. It stands for so much more than that. So the cultural engagement is sort of almost everything that exists outside of the whiskey category, things like brand collaborations, um, product placements, influencer programs. Um, and then of course there's, there, there's a huge piece on the bartender community as well. And my new role is so just a few things. Just yeah. A few just things a few man. things. Um, Shout out to the host, the host, uh, the social host platform. Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. A massive part of it. Um, and how did my, my two years? Well, I mean, I think some of the, the professional experience that I gained in, in Thailand, I did a lot in terms of kind of influencer marketing, um, and that all comes back to like building building these networks of of influencers and you just got to meet the most um the most incredible people and mm. and what was really cool is getting to create something together and i think that was a big that was a big part of my role that kind of influencer engagement side and that's something that was directly applicable then when i i moved to this new role on the cultural outreach team tom do you have i guess do you have a highlight of your time in in Bangkok for the two years. What, what would be your highlight? How long do we've left? I, I my highlight I of a, my, I have a few. My highlight of watching you is in that little van that you and Am oh, and Casey yeah, used to drive yeah, around yeah. The, the little Thailand van. You pulling in you for for it's gas just... day two last year, like hey guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little... Do you know um, one thing that I I definitely wanted to take off was driving in Bangkok. I was mad at that. I thought that was a great challenge, and it was very interesting. Um, this is why you need a full clean driver's license to yeah but i didn't i didn't expect this was when i needed but my first time driving in bangkok was in a vintage vw jemison branded van with like a man this thing is old and it had like no power steering and (laughs) that you know you're like oh (laughs) and that was my first time uh driving in bangkok but that was really cool um i think i was trying to think about this i was this is why it was so nice to 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 join the podcast today because it gave me a chance to kind of sit back and just reflect, which sometimes you know you you can forget to do. Um, and there's so many amazing experiences, um, particularly when your your job is to to meet new people. You know, I think that's always going to lead to some some really nice memories and experiences. And I think w- one standout for me is in between so we were lucky we had some space kind of in between lockdowns where we could go back to you know um some form of normality and see each other and go to bars and have events and stuff and i uh, my birthday fell in between luckily enough um so a lot of people weren't that lucky that they spent birthdays in in quarantines and lockdowns and stuff but i had an opportunity to celebrate a birthday not something i'd really done before and i was like oh, do you know what like um it's my last year in thailand i'm gonna give it a go and joined with uh, one of our key accounts it 
someone was celebrating their the owner who's like my best friend was celebrating their birthday um the day before mine so we did a joint birthday party and it blew me away um all the people who who came out to to celebrate that night and I'm, you're talking people that you met through work so i worked a lot with barbers you had a huge crew of barbers came out um musicians bartenders bar owners people from the office i could do with going to thailand to be honest this 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 chop here could, could do with uh getting a bit of a cut oh yeah cut. i'm seriously missing it man i could do it <laughs> one myself um but just seeing this collection of people um felt really nice because like i said in the beginning i went out there not knowing anybody and mm. you have a nice little moment like this and you can you realize the network that you've built you know that you must have been doing something right so i think that was a real standout moment for me i have a few other ones that are like you know chilling on an island um one of those beautiful tourist destinations with no tourists oh um, yeah, yeah chilling on an island <clears throat> with a load of island locals and watching the sunset and playing frisbee there's just tons of them as well sounds, sounds incredible i must say <laughs> it was it was good right tom a few quick fire questions before we wrap up for this amazing podcast and once again thank you very much for joining us and giving your insights into the experience that you've had on the james international graduate program so far so far, being so the, far. the key word there. But the first question, Tom, is one word people would use to describe you? Oh. oh I have to be quick. Um, <laughs> jolly. Okay. Jolly. <laughs> tis, tis the season. Tis the season, I was going to say. <laughs> okay, Tom, say a, a word in another language. Uh, loom. Which means, that was my favorite word. It means for, I forget in Thailand. <laughs> loom, loom. <laughs> So did you, have, did you have to put the hands up every time you did it? Every time. Every like, ah, time. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise it doesn't work. <laughs> Tom, one place you want to travel to next? Uh, I want to go back to Vietnam. I started um, a tour of Vietnam. I had to cut it short. So I'd love that to be the next destination. Three words to describe the Jameson International Graduate Program. Opportunity, growth, and community. Lovely. Oh, yeah. Do Fine. I need to elaborate? No. No, 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 that's fine. Favorite part of your job? People. And Tom, last question. This is not in a brief. This is off the top of my head. But say your students listen to this now and they're, del- they're deliberating whether they should go for the program or not. Um, what would you say to them? Uh, go for it. There's, there's, there's no question. I, I was the same. Um, I... You know, I just decided I'm going to throw my name in the hat because look, it's 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 a competitive uh, application process. There's no no doubt, um, but I decided that I would throw my name in the hat, and I never will regret that. You know, it was one of the best decisions I ever made. So, uh, go for it. Thank you. Well, look, Tom, I want to thank you very much for joining us today. Um, I'm going to let you get back to insert long job title here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was going to start try and say it, but I know I just won't get it in one go. Go on, give us, give us it one more time. Marketing Executive of Cultural Outreach and SNR. Okay, Marketing Executive of Cultural Outreach and SNR. I want to thank you very much for joining me. See you, Tom. See you, guys. Thanks for having me. And thanks again to Thomas. On the next episode, we'll have Paula Feenan, who will be talking to us about staying connected, the power of peer-to-peer learning. See you next time.